Large language models are changing everything. Most leading models today are autoregressive models. This means they generate text by predicting one token at a time. Each new token feeds back to help predict the next one. While autoregressive models have been widely successful, they have several limitations. First, when we make a mistake predicting the current token, errors get propagated to all future predictions. Second, controlling autoregressive models is difficult. Third, token by token generation is slow because the model cannot predict the next token until all previous ones are predicted. In contrast, diffusion models offer iterative refinement, explicit control, and faster sampling. Here is a demo of Mercury, a recent diffusion language model. It achieves remarkably fast text generation at 1000 tokens per second. How can we use diffusion models for language? Let's first review how diffusion models work for images. We start with a clean image and gradually add Gaussian noise to its pixel values. This gradually transforms the clean data into pure Gaussian noise. We call this the forward diffusion process. With these noisy images, we train a denoising network to reverse this process. This enables us to start with random noise and iteratively denoise it to produce new samples. But what about text? Like diffusion models for images, if we have this forward diffusion process, we can train a denoising model to generate text. But what does noisy text actually mean? Let's see how text is processed in AI language models. The first step is to break input text into a sequence of tokens. Each token has its own unique ID in the dictionary. This is known as tokenization. As the token IDs are discrete numbers, it does not make sense to add Gaussian noise directly. Fortunately, we can transform discrete tokens into continuous word embeddings. Together, these word embeddings form a clean representation for the text. With continuous word embeddings, we can gradually add Gaussian noise, applying the forward diffusion process. Then we can train a denoising network to reverse this process. We convert the denoise embeddings back to text by rounding them to the nearest token embeddings in our vocabulary. But this approach has limitations when working at the token level. For example, the token embedding for matter might be similar to issue or topic. But when there is a minor error in the rounding step, the generated sentence does not make sense. One way to address this problem is to encode entire sentences or paragraphs into continuous latent representations. Here, d is the dimension of the word embedding and n is the number of tokens. The role of the encoder is to compress the word embeddings into fixed size latent representations. We can transform paragraph embeddings back into text using an autoregressive decoder. Now we can apply this diffusion process in this latent space. Latent diffusion models enable us to use richer semantic units, enhancing the coherence of generated text. Once we have the denoise paragraph embeddings, we can decode them back to text. However, this approach still requires converting back and forth between discrete tokens and continuous representations. Is it possible to apply diffusion directly in the discrete space? Let's first build some intuition using images. Here, we create noisy data by linearly combining the clean data and pure noise. This enables a gradual transition between the original data distribution and the noise distribution. For text, we represent a clean token as a one-half vector. For example, this vector here encodes the second token in the vocabulary. We represent pure noise in the discrete space as a one-half vector corresponding to a special mask token. The mass token functions as an absorbing state in the diffusion process. After a token is replaced by mask, it stays as mask in all following steps, effectively representing the noise in the system. Just like with images, we generate noisy data by taking a weighted combination of the clean token vector and a pure noise, the mass token vector. Weights are selected to sum up to one, keeping the result as a valid categorical distribution. With the interpolated probability distributions, the forward diffusion process looks like this. We start with clean text data. At each denoising step, some token transition into a mask state with some probability. 
At the final step, all tokens are masked with probability 1. For the reverse diffusion process, we begin with a fully masked sequence and gradually restore the original text by predicting and replacing each mask token step by step. More specifically, at each denoting step, the model takes the current partially masked sequence as input and predicts a probability distribution over vocabulary for each mask position. We then sample a token from this distribution to replace the mask. Once a token is unmasked, it remains fixed in subsequent steps, and only the remaining mask tokens are considered for further predictions. This iterative process continues until all mass tokens have been replaced, resulting in a fully reconstructed sequence. I found it interesting to contrast the generation process with autoregressive models. To generate a sequence of tokens, autoregressive models predict one token at a time, following a strict left-to-right order. In contrast, mass diffusion models generate sequence in a completely different way. Starting with a fully masked sequence, the model gradually unmasks and replaces mass tokens with actual vocabulary tokens until all tokens are predicted. Mass diffusion models offer greater flexibility, parallelism, and controllability compared to autoregressive models. However, this approach has a drawback. Once a token is unmasked, any mistakes made cannot be corrected in later steps, leading to potential error accumulation. Fortunately, recent research has introduced various strategies to remask previously predicted tokens, enabling the model to iteratively refine its predictions. Now the million dollar question is, can mass diffusion models really compete with autoregressive models? For example, LEDA is a mask diffusion model trained from scratch under the standard pre-training and supervised fine-tuning paradigm. The model generates the response by iteratively predicting and unmasked tokens. The author demonstrates that the LADA AB achieves performance on par with leading LLMs such as LAMA3 AB in in context learning tasks. After supervised fine tuning, LADA also shows strong instruction following capabilities. In addition, LADA effectively overcomes the reversal curse, outperforming GPT 4.0 on a reverse point completion benchmark. These results demonstrate that diffusion models can match autoregressive models, challenging the notion that key LLM capabilities require autoregression. But does it scale? Can we get increasingly stronger diffusion models by scaling up the model parameters and compute? With autoregressive models, if we increase the compute budget measured in flops, the validation loss drops smoothly. The best validation loss follows a clear power law scaling. With mass diffusion models, something interesting happens. As we ramp up the compute budget, the optimal validation loss also decrease at a rate comparable to that of autoregressive models. This means that when trained optimally under the same compute constraints, mass diffusion models can match the scaling behavior of autoregressive models. However, compared to autoregressive models, Diffusion models need approximately 16 times more compute to match the validation loss. Does that mean diffusion models are not as promising as they appear? Not quite. These experiments are conducted using single epoch training, meaning that each data point is seen only once. However, in real-world scenarios, training often consists of multiple epochs over a limited data set. It turns out mass diffusion models excel in data-limited scenarios. This plot shows the validation loss versus training compute in data-constrained settings. Each point corresponds to a model trained to convergence, with the best validation loss achieved for a given compute budget, measured in flops, plotted on the y-axis. Initially, autoregressive models outperform diffusion models. However, as training continues with repeated paths over the limited dataset, that is, more epochs, autoregressive models quickly reach a plateau and begin to overfit. In contrast, mass diffusion models continue to improve with more compute, showing no signs of overfitting and achieving better validation loss with increased training. This demonstrates that in data-limited regimes, diffusion models can surpass autoregressive models when given sufficient compute. The same trend holds when we double the size of training data. 
when we use sufficient amount of compute, diffusion models outperform autoregressive models. Here the plot compares the validation loss across training epochs and model sizes for autoregressive models on the left and diffusion models on the right, both trained on 100 million unique tokens. Validation loss is shown as a function of epochs on the x-axis and the model parameters on the y-axis. In the single epoch regime, autoregressive models outperform diffusion models. 7.07 .07 versus 10.65 but when we train for many epochs, something interesting happens. Division models end up with a lower final loss, 3.55, compared to 3.71 for autoregressive models. That's a 67% improvement for division models, compared to only 48% improvement for autoregressive models. This demonstrates that division models are better at leveraging repeated data, but require significantly more training to realize their advantage in data-limited scenarios. Why are diffusion models more data-efficient? Let's illustrate this with an example. Imagine that we have a short sequence with only four tokens, x1 to x4. For autoregressive models, training data is constructed so that the model learns to predict each token based on all previous tokens in a fixed left-to-right order. In contrast, mass diffusion models can learn from many different mask versions of the text, allowing them to better use the available training data. Here we can see the effect of repeated training. The plot illustrates the predicted validation loss for autoregressive models. As compute budget increases, the dotted line represents a hypothetical scenario where repeated data is as beneficial as new data. For autoregressive models, these scenarios hold true up to approximately 4 epochs. In other words, training for 4 epochs with repeated data yields nearly the same benefits as training on fresh data. For diffusion models, it extends up to 100 epochs. This indicates that diffusion models are much more resilient to data repetition compared to autoregressive models. This is exciting. I can't wait to see the future development in this topic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.